Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we did a tier list not that long ago on all the titans, the legendary minions in Hearthstone, but we didn't do our usual tier list on the legendaries, the other legendary minions from the Titans expansion. I thought we would do that as it's always a lot of fun. I want to give a reminder, uh, we still have our giveaway going on for two tavern passes out of my pocket. All you have to do is like a comment in the video. It's in the description below. It's got that thumbnail uh, on the screen. Be subscribed to the channel and I will announce the giveaway winners next week. So hit that sub button, make me go broke, but Thought it'd be a lot of fun to go over this and also give a reminder that you will be able to open your packs early. Um, I'm going to be opening mine live on twitch.tv slash Zeddy at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll also upload my pack opening and explanation on how to do that yourself by starting your own Firestar Gathering. But if you want to come hang out and see how... Um, you know, unlucky I seem to get and how lucky Regis always gets. We'll see maybe this time around, it'll be a little bit different. So we'll be opening our Titans packs early a little bit later on today. And yeah, I'll upload it to YouTube if you can't check out the stream. Anyway, starting off with a tier list, uh, we have Algalon the Observer, the neutral legendary four mana four four. Valkyrie replace your hero with Algalon's vision. So one mana hero power, basically you see what your car, uh, what card your opponent's gonna draw and you can decide to throw at the bottom of their deck. Very slow, then you gotta pay a one mana tax on that, basically that option every time. And also the fact you lose your hero power, which can be relevant. I think it's a fun option for people. I don't think it'll be very competitive. I'm gonna give it a C, but I know a lot of people seem to be really high on that card. I just, I can't see that hero power uh, really being worth it. Next, we have the Flame Behemoth, the neutral mech, a six mana, four, five mech at that. Valkyrie get two random magnetic mechs that cost two less. Obviously you want to put this in a very heavy mech deck like mech paladin, mech mage, or if you're building a very uh, heavy mech rogue deck, but I feel like it's too expensive and some of the magnetics can be quite expensive on top of that, making it just not so great, including they just put a seven mana six, six that gives you an eight drop. Although it goes down to five, I just feel like it's too expensive for these decks that want to be really aggressive. I'm also going to give it a C. Next, we have Freya, Keeper of Nature, the Druid Keeper. Eight mana, four, six. Choose one, duplicate your hand or summon copies of all other friendly minions. It's interaction with the Titan, basically playing the Titan, refreshing your mana, playing Freya, getting a copy of that Titan, using its ability right away. I feel like we'll be relevant enough to make this card worth playing. And sometimes just copying your hand can be good as well to the point where I will give her a B. Um, you can also combine her effect with other cards, but overall, I just feel like that whole, yeah, basically making your Titan even better seems like a pretty good strategy for those slower druid decks. Next we have Helia, the Death Knight uh, legendary. It's got one unholy rune. Foul cry, shuffle all three plagues into your opponent's deck. Plagues they draw this game are unending. It's a four mana four four, almost a Yeti for like basically infinite damage as long as it doesn't get steam cleanered or milled, something like that. But just playing in theory crafting, this card is obnoxious. It's pretty insane and you can shuffle a lot of plagues, and once this is going, they're not going anywhere, and those plagues, the damage adds up, the disruption adds up, they're super solid. I think Plague Deathlight has a realistic shot, and Helia is a big reason for it, that I'm gonna give her an A, not quite S, I'm not totally sold, it's like a tier one, top tier deck, but I do think she is gonna be awfully powerful, and awfully frustrating. We have Hodir, the father of giants, the hunter legendary, eight mana, eight, eight, Valkyrie, set the stat stats of the next three minions you play to 8-8. Eight eight. So you play this, you play three one drops, they're all 8-8s. Eight you play, you know, a charger, which doesn't really exist outside of what, uh, Freebird? Um, you get an 8-8 eight eight Freebird or it gets a buff on top of that. I feel like this is way too slow. Hunter has a lot of really incredible aggressive tools or just late game tools where you play like Lorthamar and the Double King Crush that this type of card just isn't going to be worth running. In my opinion, it's a pretty scary card, but again, eight mana, and there's just better late game stuff to do for Hunter, in my opinion, that I'm also going to give it a C. Next, we have Ignis the Eternal Flame, a four mana, two, four neutral legendary. We all get it for free as the free legendary on that rewards track. 
Battlecry if you forged a card this game, craft a custom weapon. They range from one to five to 10 mana and can give like Wind Fury, Poisonous, Death Rattle, AOE, uh, summoning minions, drawing cards, gaining armor, tons of good stuff. The weapons feel really good, especially five mana curving into that. And there's a good enough amount of Forge cards. I was really uh, skeptical of Forge, but the more I played with it in Arena, in the Theory Crafting event, I do think Forge will be a playable mechanic. And that makes Ignis a pretty darn decent card where I will give him a B. I think he'll slot in as like a greed option or you build an OTK around getting a Wind Fury uh, weapon and then giving it a bunch of attack buffs and trying to kill your opponent that way that can be really solid or just getting that cheap weapon for poisonous AOE can also be really powerful. Next we have Jotun the Eternal, the Demon Hunter Legendary, five minute four five battle cry for the rest of the game. Cast a copy of the first spell you draw each turn at enemies so it's targeted it doesn't really backfire um it's incredible with relics it's free value the only downside to this card and i even felt it playing it in theory crafting is sometimes it's too much value sometimes it actually screws your hand drawing too many cards or hitting stuff but also the first time i played it the next turn i got a free relic of dimensions that discounted about minus 20 mana and it was disgusting and this card to me just puts relic dh which is already one of the best decks in the game over the top it's incredible to me i'm giving it an s but it also might just be too greedy we'll have to wait and see but i feel like too greedy and relic demon hunter just don't really go together they just really work uh, next we have Kologar in the eight mana 610 neutral minion it's got rush whenever this minion attacks a minion put it in your hand death rattle uh, so when this dies move any that are still in your hand into your opponents so they get it back but they still have to spend the mana to play it it's a titan remover it's also like a poof effect it doesn't take any damage uh, it just wipes it off the board puts it into your hand and the downside of course it's eight mana it's really hard to kind of abuse that play it take that minion plate so your opponent can't you could can do that in like finley so they can't get it back right it's not in your hand anymore but overall very expensive very greedy and i see it as more as a fun kind of greed option unless a deck finds a way of cheating it out early then of course it becomes a lot better but haven't really thought of great uh, answers to that next we have loken the jailer of yog saron warlock legendary six mana three three battle cry you discover a minion from your deck summon a tentacle with its stats and taunt you hit fanatum you get a 15 15 taunt that's broken but still just hitting like a four mana seven seven that new taunt which is pretty good with the new warlock location or just hit or titan get a bunch of stats and also draw it which is really powerful it's a really good card you get a big body you draw a card and if you're you know hitting specifically minions you're likely going to hit some good stuff and i even had a game of theory crafting where i hit a one one tour guide and that was a good pick because it let me cycle in a certain match up to get what I needed to get and I won the game I'm giving it an A I think it's a staple in like the hand control warlock undead warlock just any warlock deck that wants to play the late game it's really solid Mimiron the mastermind the rogue mech three mana two five after you play a mech get a random one of Mimiron's gadgets they vary from mana cheat to stealth to swapping stats to uh, basically a one mana shadow step that's double sided with no discount tons of good stuff this card snowballs a ridiculous amount it is really strong uh you don't even need to play that many mechs you just play a couple of those spark bots and stuff and just go off it's gonna work really well with their new four drop that's also busted um i think it's a really good card i'm giving it an a as well uh the mech package in rogue looks legitimately terrifying and i'll have a gameplay video of that pretty soon whereas one of my best performing decks i feel like it's really being slept on what's already in the game not being slept on prism yog Saron, the neutral location legendary location at that seven mana three to ability choose a character cast four random spells target possible it's an okay card you're seeing it in some greedy decks like uh, like skeleton mage you've even seen like relic dhs or thief rogues i'm gonna give it a b it's a relatively okay card but it's also can backfire and not be great but it's seen play, so I got to give it a playable uh, tier score rating. We have Ra Den, the six mana five five priest legendary death row summon each other minion, so not itself. You play this game, it didn't start in your deck. There's that whole mech package going on where you, you play those mechs over and over and you try and bring them back really slow death rattle kind of kills it and those minions you're trying to bring back aren't really defending you at all 
and you just might as well play Relic DH that scales faster, cheats mana, and just does so many more broken things. I'm going to give it an F. I just don't see Rodden being playable, but clip it for when I'm wrong. Later, we have Sif, the Mage Legendary, 6 mana, 4, 6 spell damage, plus 1. It's improved by each spell school you've cast this game. It's not very hard to get this to 5, 6, 7 spell damage. Well, maybe not 7, but 5 or 6 pretty easily with the new cards added to the game. And then you can just play your Arcane Bolts into incredible damage. This is the card that needs to really put spell school mage over the top as the seven mana cyclone spell i don't think it's all that solid it's not that great but sip i think has a shot i'm gonna give her a low a plus her signature card art is absolutely ridiculous we have forum the storm lord for shaman three mana three four bow cry unlock your overloaded mana crystals draw that many cards this draws one to two cards you're happy anything more than that it is ridiculous and the lightning overload or <clears throat> the nature overload shaman looks really solid has a shot but this card could go into anything it's a decent amount of overload cards super solid i'm giving it an s it just slots into so many shaman decks with odin prime designated eight mana eight eight warrior legendary battle cry for the rest of the game after your hero gains armor they gain that much attack for that turn did you know if you play two of them it stacks the effect actually stacks on this uh, at least for now unless they change that later but yes this is like the big payoff for control warrior i still think control warrior sucks but you could play it in other decks even a black rock and roll a tempo warrior deck i feel like you're going to make this card work because the damage output it can create is ridiculous and it's a really cool fun card i'm gonna give it an s i'm overrating it i think it should be an a but i'll give it an s for turning our armor into smarking and last we have tier the paladin legendary seven mana four five battle cry resurrected two three and four attack paladin minion kind of goes with that earth urn package but overall you can just play it with whatever it's just a giant stat bomb it's not bad even on just you know whatever stats it's paladin minions you could play it even in like a big deck kind of you don't really want to do that because you cheated out in antis energy but still you can play with neutral minions even if you want to do that it will always bring back those specific paladin minions you want including earthens that get that buff when they come back i'll give it a b i think it can slot into multiple paladin decks and do some damage so you can see that's my tier list of the legendaries i'll put the template down below if you want to show me how it's done what's rated right what's rated wrong and tune in later today we got pack openings and i'll have another gameplay video so three videos today if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe have a great day and stay salty my friends